So today I'm going to show you different ways of binding your zines together um, to create little books. So we started with this, made a little zine and bound it like this, but let's say you want to put a cover on it. I'm going to show you how you can make a little cover for it. This would be just for one zine, that would work pretty well. But you could take four zines, if your whole family made a zine, and you could do a bigger binding like this with what we call signatures, each zine being a signature, and this one holds four. That would be one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is with paper, and the binding is inside. This is made with uh, handmade paper, and, uh, and it's sewn together. It's still signatures, but the signatures are sewn together into the binding. So that's another thing we could do. So what do you need? Okay, so if you're going to bind with fabric, you need fabric scraps. You need scissors or an X-Acto. You need a ruler for measuring, a pencil for making marks, some kind of clips to hold things together, an eraser might be handy. You definitely need glue. I really like this project glue because it's very thick, but there are many kinds of glues you could use. I don't think a glue stick would work very well, though. And, of course, if you're using uh, liquid glue, you want something to spread the glue on to apply it. And I'm using recycled paper from uh, pizza boxes and cereal boxes. But I just wanted to show you, if it's like this, where it's pretty lumpy and raised, that would be a, not a good one to use as a book cover. You want one that's completely smooth. And you need two pieces that are 7.5 centimeters wide by 11 centimeters high. If you did the zine out of one sheet of paper, as I showed you in the last video. And your spine is 11 centimeters high, the same height as your book cover. But the width depends on how many you want to put in. So with this one, I didn't even put uh, a, a spine. I just used a piece of felt. This one also, I didn't actually put a spine. I used a piece of felt, but a wider piece of felt for more uh, magazines inside. So that's really up to you. But I'm going to show you two ways of doing it, and one of them will use a cardboard spine. Okay, so if I were to do it with fabric, I'm going to spare you as much as I can my cutting, since I'm a terrible cutter. I've cut a piece of bandana, because I'm trying to show you how we can use things around the house to do this, right? Recycle things. So I've got an old bandana, so I've used that instead of going to the store and buying fabric, since right now I can't do that anyways. And I'm going to glue it to the shiny side. This project glue is pretty old, so it's hard to get out of the bottle. Hopefully you have something a little fresher, a little bit easier to get out. And actually, I should be doing this on paper and not on my lovely cutting board. But that way I won't get glue on my lovely cutting board. So I'm going to spread the glue out. And this is one cover. So this was if I was going to do two separate covers. This is just doing one. So I'm going to put my bandana fabric and I'm going to make sure I'm putting the right side up. And glue it on. Stretch it out so that it covers the whole thing. I can t tell on the back how straight it is if I need to move it around a bit. And you can see I already clipped the corners a little bit. That wasn't straight, so I'm going to move it over. So I've already clipped the corners here. And I'll show you with paper a little bit more clearly how to do that. But that's just so that it'll be easier to fold over. And I'm going to put some glue on these edges. And, you know, if you watch professional or really good book binders, they're going to have proper tools to do this. They're going to be really neat and really precise. I'm not a book binder. I'm really just a painter who's showing you a way you can do this at home simply. So you're going to see that it's not very neat or precise, but you could watch more videos of professionals doing this and you'll see how to do it really perfectly. Um, this is just a fast and easy way of doing it. So you could see now I've got a book, one cover of my book. I, I find that a bit crooked, a lot crooked, but there you have it. That would be one book cover. Now, if I want to do it with paper, I've got my front and back and my spine for this one. And I've already cut out two pieces of paper. 
These are handmade papers. I'm going to use this one for the cover and this one for the inside cover. So I want to make sure that I've got the good part of my paper the wrong way because I'm going to glue all this onto that. So I'm sorry to put you through watching the fabric as well. You bend over the corners and really press them down. I could actually make this one up. No, I think it's head enough. You want to just fold over those corners. This is a little bit difficult because of the threads that are in the paper. And then I'm going to cut, I'm going to use that fold as a guideline, I'm going to cut just past it. I'm not going to cut right to the edge, I'm just going to cut right past it, but I'm using it as a guideline to see where to cut. That one's pretty crooked. Like I said, I'm pretty bad at cutting. Do as I say, not as I do, right? Alright, so now I've cut the corners off. So the next step is to watch me painfully apply glue again. And I'll just do one side. I think, so that you don't have to suffer through watching the whole thing being glued, but I think you understand the concept. Or I'll do two sides, because I don't think you'll be able to see if I only do one side. Actually, I just realized I, wanted, I want to put felt in the this center, ribbon, because this goes better. So I'm going to cut a piece of ribbon, and I'm actually going to stick it in, but you'll see when I stick it in. And uh, I'll probably use like a gold pom-pom for that. Don't even need to use a pom-pom. I just like, I just like pom-poms. So, okay. So I'm going to fold these over. And the fact that I've cut the corners, as you can see, makes it a little bit easier. Sorry about the dogs barking. I have a lot to say because it's... A beautiful day outside and people are walking by and every time somebody walks by they have to make a comment so that's a for your entertainment my dog's also barking during this video so that one's not great that corner so I'm gonna cut it again a little bit I think I'll cut it a little bit tighter okay and this paper is really thick uh, Now, real book book uh, makers have a tool. It's like I forget what it's called. They have a couple of tools. One's an awl to make holes, and another one is this bone that they use for folding things and bending things. And it really is a perfect little tool. So if you start looking on the internet for book binding tools, you're going to see all kinds of things you could do down the road if you get into this. But for just something quick and dirty that you can make with stuff you have lying around the house, that's good enough. So here's where I'm going to stick in my bookmarks. I'm going to add a little bit of glue here. There we go. Now I have a bookmark and I can glue a pom-pom to the end of that, which is kind of fun. Now the next step <clears throat> would be to um, glue this on top, cut it to fit and glue it. I'm not going to show that because this video is already getting too long, but you can see where we're going with that. See, there's our... Our book cover, handmade book, with a nice... I've got to cut that piece of felt because I didn't do a good job of cutting it, so I'll... which is not surprising. Like I told you, I'm terrible at cutting. So um, you can imagine, though, what it's going to look like, right? When we put that on and glue it, it's going to be quite pretty. So next, so you could do it with fabric. You do So let's skip forward. So the next step would be, like I said, this one here. I did two... That would be, I think, the front. This would be, I have to decide which way I want to go. I think it looks better this way. So I'd make sure that I flip it over like that. This one, I'm not going to bother putting a uh, cardboard binding. I would just glue that right on with my, this one, I would put this here because on this one, I'm going to take an old index card and I'm going to just glue it right on top of that with this trapped in between and then that will be the book cover. Again, I'm not gonna demo that. You can imagine how I glue it, right? I've already glued the fabric. I'm gonna glue the felt the same way I did on the other one, and I'm gonna trap my bookmark, and I'm gonna glue that on to make that cover. So that's another option. So the next step is sewing it, and I know that's what you can't wait for. So, at the beginning I said you need thread. I think I did, but you do. If I didn't say it, 
you need thread. I like using embroidery floss because I like the thickness and the sheen, but I have to say this is no name brand embroidery floss and it's terrible and it gets tangled all the time, so you are better to buy uh, a good quality brand. Okay, so here's where I'm using my clips to hold things in place, and here I've made a template. So you know that when we did the books originally, I used this template to figure out where to put the holes to do the sewing. Well, I've made a template of where I want my holes for this. They all so line up in the same place, and I've drawn those holes, which may be hard to see on this video. And I've already sewn one of the signatures in to my book. They're sewn in. That's what it looks like when you do two pieces of fabric and a felt. So I'll just show you the next one. So I've come up through, and I'm going to go to the middle of my book here. And I've also, you notice, cut off the threads so that they're short, because they don't need all that extra thread if I'm binding a few of them together. And I go through here, just like when I bound it, I'm going to go, but now I'm going to go through the hole that I drew here as a guideline and bring it through. And I'm going to go down here to the bottom, and I'm going to look for the matching hole where I drew on my template on the spine so I'd know where that, oops, that's not where it goes, that's not where it goes. And then I'm going to go through here. And there we have two signatures sewn in. Back through the center and back th through and then I'm going to sew this guy in so I'm going to come up through the line the, the hole that I the dot that I drew and go through the center here uh oh that's the problem with this thread but also if your tail is a little bit too long which I think there we go and back through here and I should be able to line it up with hole number three so I've got one booklet left to do after this bring it back through the center nope sorry not through the center back to the bottom so tricky trying to find the where I drew the, the dot on my template Oh, and now I have the last one to add. Okay, uh, if this video is getting too long, so I'm not going to show you how I add the next one, but you can see it's just the same thing. I follow my holes, I add that one, and at the end, I have this. And what I did was I took my two tails, the one from the beginning and the one from the end, and I tied them on the spine and left them hanging because I think it's kind of cute. But if you do the other kind of book, the paper one, you're sewing... You can put it through all the way if you want. You could also, at the end, if the sewing comes through, you could put another piece of paper over it. I haven't done this one, so I can't show you, but this one we hid the sewing inside. So that's, it's getting torn because it's old, but that's an option. And there you go. How to make yourself your zines into to a little mini book. Fun, right?